And three, two, one. Welcome, August man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't forgotten that August man. Yeah, it happened two years ago. Uh, yeah, I was uh, given a nickname when I went to the gym. Uh, that's where we met um, for the entire year. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's something that I still I can be reminded time to time again. Yeah, but yeah. I I feel like uh, I feel like I haven't uh, I missed out like John 2019. So what happened in 2019? Wow. Um, 2019 has been a crazy year for me. Um, I did a lot of uh, lives, key milestones, all together in one year. <laughs> I bought a HDB flat. I mm-hmm. moved out for the first time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the renovations. I I got married to the love of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I I moved in. Uh, we got married. We found out that we couldn't be parents. Yeah. And uh, I think last but not least, towards the end of the year, I switched jobs. Yeah. yeah I moved to a different uh, company, a different organization. So 2019 has been crazy for me. So that's probably the reason why we're not seeing each other much in 2019. Yeah. yeah. I, are you still allowed to say your previous company? Do you uh, all live on good terms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we left, we left on uh, amicable terms. Okay. Um, I, yeah. So your question was, why did I leave? Okay, yeah. Why do you leave from um, Igloo Home, yeah. Igloo Home to yeah. now Lazada? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the the reasons are a few. Mm. Uh, I think I wanted to move on to a a bigger organization, to a bigger industry. So so Igloo mm. Home sells uh, smart digital locks. Uh, I think its claim to fame was uh, the partnership with Airbnb globally. Mm. So Airbnb, who doesn't want to pass keys and collect keys after your uh, guest leaves or arrives, mm. uh, uses our locks and it's all synced via the mobile app. So uh, I was there for two years. Mm. I was doing uh, the regional work for Southeast Asia. I was doing the business development for Southeast Asia. Mm. Uh, and I, I spent two years there and the uh, reason why I left, I wanted to learn, uh, I think, more structural and processes. Mm. Uh, how, bigger organi- how bigger organizations uh, structure their people, their processes. Mm. Yeah, so that's one. Mm. Uh, number two, I think e-commerce is big, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, especially in, in now, lah. Especially in, yeah. Yeah, in this COVID nineteen days. Yeah. Uh, and I think back then when I was running uh, the business for Igloom in Singapore, a lot of a uh, big part of our sales came from our e-commerce uh, platform, rather our e-commerce site. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. So uh, it was something that I was paying attention to. Mm. Um, and I, I, I think it's inevitable that e-commerce is a big trend. In fact, I think I'm quite late to e-commerce. Mm. So I think bigger industry, in a way, uh, a bigger organization. Mm. Lazada now, it's uh, backed by Alibaba. It's part of Alibaba. Mm. Um, we are like the Southeast Asian arm of uh, Alibaba. It's been back for a while, right? Yeah, uh, since 2017. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, I think this too, and I think I also wanted to work in an organization that's committed in Southeast Asia. Mm. So um, in Singapore, it's a lot of MNCs. Yeah. Uh, HQ could be in Europe or US. So I wanted a company that's focused on Southeast Asia. Mm. So during my days at Igloo Home, I had the good fortune of traveling in the region. Mm. And I'm actually quite uh, committed uh, and I see a lot of potential in the, in Southeast the future Asia. of Southeast Asia. Mm. Yeah. So to see uh, Lazada operating in six uh, different markets in Southeast Asia, um, I think it's, it's something that I want to work in. I want to work towards the same goals. Mm. Yeah. And so far, how has it been? Uh, uni, uni joined November, since November? So yeah. So it's been four months now, I'd yeah. say. Uh, so how's it been? I think it was uh, quite a steep learning curve for me. Okay. In the beginning. Okay. There were a lot of terms, uh, a lot of terminologies that I had to learn in the e-commerce world. Yeah. Uh, this could have been very easy for a fresh graduate in the e-commerce, uh, e-commerce background, yeah. uh, e-commerce degree. But for me, it was uh, something to pick, to pick up, up right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and also uh, the structure of the company, the fact that it's bigger, mm. uh, I also need to navigate uh, the different teams, the different business units. Mm. Uh, so certain objectives are performed by different business units, mm. but each business units uh, approach it differently. So I need to navigate and I need to work with the different business units to reach a common goal, a common objective in the, in the organization. So uh, working with people, uh, learning the processes, learning the terms, Learning how e-commerce actually functions, I think, uh, contributed to a steep learning curve for me in the beginning. Uh, it's been four months. I still think there are days that I, I learned something new. Mm. Um, but it's been fun. I think it's been very dynamic. Uh, the immediate team that I work with has been fantastic. 
Um, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy. I, can, what's your role? What's your role in Lazada? So what I do with Lazada yeah. is uh, I work in Lazada Singapore. Yeah. So um, there is this thing called the Last Mall. So Last Mall is the curated, um, branded channel on Lazada. Mm. So sellers are sort of bracketed in two big brackets. One is uh, marketplace. Yeah. And the other one is Last Mall. So Last Mall is really devoted to like brand building, mm. right? And it's more brand focused. Uh, and I think the analogy that we tell people is that uh, if you go and shop on Lazada marketplace stores, it's like going to um, Boogie Street mm. where you don't really care about the brand. Mm. Uh, you will want something that's a bit more affordable. Mm. Um, but f- shopping on Last Mall is like shopping at Iron Orchard where you see multi brands. A bit more verified kind of thing. Yes, yeah. correct. And it doesn't mean that it's only luxury brands. Yeah. You've got the mass brand, say, in the basement of Iron Orchard. You've got yeah. Muji, you've got Uniqlo, yeah, you've got yeah, Watsons. Yeah. Uh, and then upper floors, you've got more luxury brands. And that's yeah. what Last Mall aspires to be. We yeah. want to have that uh, hassle-free, yeah. uh, verified, yeah. uh, authentic shopping experience yeah. for uh, shoppers in Singapore. Yeah. So what I do in that Last Mall team is I'm in the business development. So I recruit strategic brands to be on last mall ah okay so because the brands are a bit more curated and yeah. a bit more verified we have to keep a sharper eye on who we want to recruit yeah uh, who want to push to sell on last mall yeah yeah so this is what i do and then like for lazada environment um especially in singapore do they still regard themselves of like a startup do they still is uh, it still like a startup environment basically so it's only four months for me, right? Yeah. Um, I do hear of uh, days in the earlier days where uh, the previous owners uh, were still around before Alibaba took, uh, before Alibaba became the principal owner. Mm. Um, I think there has been a big change mm. since those days till now. Mm. Uh, I can't comment on those days because I wasn't present in those days. Mm. Uh, but back to your question about whether it's still be it like a startup, I think we want to, we try to. Um, there are challenges in this. There are also benefits of. Um, wanting to think and act and behave like a startup um, but in a sense of moving fast la. fast yeah. uh, and taking ownership mm. of uh, changes and uh, and uh, I mean one of our key uh, values is uh, <clears throat> uh, number one focus is our customers mm. and for me my customers is the sellers right because mm. I recruit them I want to make sure that they have a good experience selling on mm. uh, last small channel so they are supposed to my customers so um, I I think if you tell people Lazada is a startup, I think not many people believe you mm. now. <laughs> um, but I think there is still a lot of that um, essence, uh, startup essence in what we do now. Yeah, definitely still a lot of growth potential, I guess. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, the other thing that's very interesting about you is a lot of my previous guests, they move from nine to five jobs into maybe starting up and doing their own entrepreneurship stuff. But you went the other way around. You actually start up something first. And then you went for corporate jobs, so called corporate jobs in a sense, lah. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, like, what was that process like? As in, what made you want to switch from there? Mm, okay. Uh, okay. So this is a loaded question. <laughs> uh, loaded meaning. I mean, I have a lot of uh, versions of this answer. Uh, okay. My answers. Um, so your question is, how has it been for me, and why is it? We can start with that first. How has it been? Okay. Yeah. So. Maybe the, for context, right, from background, I, mm. uh, I was out of school and then I did, I spent two years in the banking sector. Mm. And then after that, I started, uh, you know, I don't know, yeah, I started the uh, laser Something. tech, okay. laser tech business. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I paused for a while because it was such a drastic change. Yes. I did economics in school, uh, I did banking, yeah. and then I switched to something that's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I spent six and a half years there. Mm. Um, and then I moved on to Eagle Home mm. for two years. And then now I'm in Lazada. Mm. So that's the context and that's the background. Uh, mm. From starting my way from banking, very structured, very rigid, to laser tech, where it's uh, more like an events company. And later on, we did our own equipment. Mm. Uh, to then a startup, a Series mm. A startup uh, at Eagle Home. And then now in Lazada, a much mm. bigger uh, organization. So, how has it been? Um, it's, it's, I do see now the value of uh, having startup experience, Start some, having that experience of starting something on my own in the past. Mm. It helps me to be, there's a term for it called entrepreneur, right? In, mm. Within a company. Mm. So uh, I see um, when recruiters speak to me, 
about different roles. Um, they, they do value their experience of mine. And for me, when I enter an organization now, uh, I do see that um, my past experience, although in a different, drastically different industry, helps a lot. Mm. Uh, in terms of like drive, mm. uh, in trying to own the entire process as much as possible, mm. just so that I can answer the customer in front of me right away. Mm. Right? I don't want to uh, rely on different departments to do different things. Mm. I want to get all answers first mm. before uh, meeting the customer mm. so that I can answer everything and be a one-stop shop. Because that was what I was trying to do as a, as a entrepreneur, right? Correct. I, I had very lean resources. It was mostly me doing most of the things. You had to find out everything. And yeah. So so I was the guy that did the digital uh, Google ads, uh, answering the phone calls, printing yeah. receipt, going out there, hunting for part-timers to run the events together, yeah. renting the van, renting a warehouse space and all that. Yeah. So uh, I think this kind of uh, experience and spirit, I think still uh, is relevant today, even though it's in a bigger organization, mm. right? Um, I, I think it's, it's fun, mm. uh, and through starting my own thing in the beginning of my career, I also acknowledge some of the challenges that I faced. Mm. Uh, for example, if I want to do great, powerful things, uh, I need to be able to do things at scale, mm. right? Uh, and I, as an individual, I only got 24 hours, right? I got a pair of legs and hands, a pair of eyes, and that's about it. Mm. Uh, but if I want to do great things, if I want to have a great impact in the world, uh, I need to do more. I need to influence more. Mm. I need to probably lead a team, lead an organization or a department to be put in more impact. So mm. that even when I sleep, uh, people are still working or the work that my team is doing is still being impacted. There's always something going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, how, how has it been? I think uh, it's been insightful uh, and coming to bigger organizations, I could really understand where my gaps were mm. when I ran my own business. Mm. Um, and it's been uh, quite insightful. Mm. Uh, why did I make these changes uh, mm. from uh, starting my own thing to now uh, working in a organ bigger organization? It was also partly because of the gaps that I saw, right? Mm. I realized that when I was running my own thing, there were gaps. Mm. I didn't know how to manage people. I didn't have experience managing people, mm. right? I didn't know how to manage resources. Mm. If I got X number of dollars, how should I spend it? Mm. Why do I spend this way? And, and, and the timing of spending this money or spend, spending uh, these resources. Mm. Uh, at point A, should I do this and that? Why? At point B, should I do this and that? And why? So these are things that I'm constantly learning now working in a bigger organization, right? Uh, so that's one. And number two is also management styles. Mm. I get to work with different leaders now uh, I get to see their style mm. uh, and I think that is beneficial for me um, should I down the road uh, to be leading a department or an organization or to do my own startup again mm. so uh, yeah I think it's been insightful it's been uh, been a great learning journey for me um, is there I mean people also ask me this question right all the mm. time like do I feel uh, disgraced or do I feel like it's a step down from running my business to now being an employee uh, I never felt that yeah. Uh, I think to me, it's a very simple uh, fact that mm. if the average male in Singapore works at 24, 25 years old, and currently our retirement age is about 65, yeah. we're going to work for at least 40 years of our lives, right? And what's the rush, right? Uh, and I've worked for 10 years now, so it's probably 25% of my career. Yeah, right? Assuming a 40-year 40, 40 career. Yeah. So what's, why the rush, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's good that I'm learning yeah. in this early part of my career, yeah. um, so that later on down the road, I'm able to leverage on all these experiences and lessons, yeah. um, and hopefully a bigger impact. Yeah. yeah. You say something very interesting also. You say something about... Uh, people asking you whether it's like a step down like from being your own boss and you become an employee. Actually, that's very interesting because I think uh, I think that's maybe a very recent mindset that being your own boss is better. Like maybe within the last five years or so, like people think that being your own boss is better. Whereas before that, you know, if you ask our parents' generation, if you're an entrepreneur, means you're jobless, la, mm. basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a stable job, means you're jobless. La. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, having said that, uh, I think by definition, I'm a late uh, millennial. Huh? Uh, so, so maybe that's millennial thinking. So uh, I don't know whether to put myself in the millennial bucket or, or not. Um, so I, I think you, you are right 
um, that I think this notion of a being entrepreneur um, and being called to be an entrepreneur yeah. is getting stronger and stronger. Mm. Um, but having said that, I also think that depends on person to person. Right? Mm. Your influences, uh, who is your hero, what's your philosophy in life. Um, so for me, I think it's about learning. Mm. It's about living an exciting life, a fruitful life uh, versus power. Mm. I mean, I mean, you and I went through army, right? You mm. know, in Czech last time, we always say, if you want power, you want people to call you sir, you go to McDonald's. Uh. Mm. Right? You go yeah. McDonald's, people call you sir, right? Yeah. In army, you know, you're going to call your senior sir, right? Yeah. So if you want power, people call you sir, go to McDonald's. Yeah. Right? So I think that's not my focus. Mm. Right? Um, I, I want to live a life where it's meaningful, where I can have impact. Mm. Uh, what kind of impact? I think it differs from a different stage of my life. Mm. Uh, so yeah, yeah, back to the I mean the disgrace of being a from mm. a own boss to being an employee. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's about learning. Yeah, it's about having impact. If yeah. I can have bigger impact, if I can learn more at certain places, why not? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's always about power down the road. Yeah, yeah. I think it's all about self awareness. Also, I I had a lot of questions uh, throughout um, when I was in. Well, basically, I am still in Fitness Bravo for a long time. Mm. A lot of people ask me like, hey, since I've been from the start of Fitness Bible, how come I'm not a partner mm. for the gym, right? Mm. And then, yeah, the my answer has always been the same. It's just because uh, there was no need for one more partner, number one. Number two, I see myself in a better position as an employee. So, uh, uh, basically, I'm a better right-hand man rather than, rather than the, the person leading the team, right? Mm. So, you need to have, I guess, a lot of self-awareness to know where your where your position is in the in, in the team per se yeah. to best excel the team as a whole yeah 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 so yeah e- even up to now i don't i never saw uh i never saw a value of me being a partner um yeah whereas i feel that whatever my position now is is perfect like i can experiment with stuff yes. and give suggestions yes uh, with lesser consequences as a, yes. as compared to being a partner, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe at this point, I maybe I'd like to debunk some of the myths, right? Of being old boss, right? Yeah. Maybe a lot of people think, a lot of people watching this might think that it's a great benefit. It's a life goal to be a boss. Uh, but a lot of things that uh, goes behind the scene, all right? Mm. The less glamorous part. I mean, you see. YouTube ads, right? Uh, about, mm. uh, you sell things online, you drive a nice Merc, you get a sad story, and now e-commerce is the thing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, and then you can, I don't know, fly to fly your mother, fly your parents for holidays, drive a nice car. Mm. But um, before you get there, there are a lot of things that maybe people don't know, right? Mm. Who's the one that clears the trash in the office? It's the mm. boss, right? I mean, at least, at least I did that uh, yeah, when yeah. I was a uh, when I was a uh, very it was a very small team. Yeah. Or when I was alone, right? I, I did that, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the boss is also the glorified, uh, or sometimes the unglorified Sagang warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it does all the things that nobody wants to do, things yeah. that people you can't pay people to do. Yeah. Right. You take care of many many things. Mm. You sometimes are the face of the company, mm. especially if you're a startup, and. Uh, you can never think about uh, having a peaceful night's sleep. Mm. Even when you're on holiday, you're never on holiday. Mm. Um, these are some of the sacrifices or some of the things that go through in a boss or in a, in a startup founder's life. Mm. Um, you're worrying about money, when it's going to come in, mm. when is, uh, whether you have done money in the bank to pay your employees every month. Yeah, that's uh, a big thing also. So, yeah. and when it comes to tax seasons, whether you need to declare GST, who's going to do it for you. Mm. Uh, and if you run a business, there are certain risks. Mm. If someone decides to sue you, uh, what do you do? Where do you go to? How do you solve that issues? Uh, when you're feeling down, you can't really show it because uh, as a boss, your employee sees your emotions uh, and that affects their day. Mm. So a lot of all this, you can't really be yourself if you're the boss, so to speak. Mm. So uh, I think, yeah, this is some of the myths, right? That, that, that People uh, might be thinking, oh, your mm. boss can do whatever you want, come in late, work late, work from home, do whatever things you want, hire whoever you want. Yeah. Um, but I think with greater power come greater responsibility. Yeah. So are you able to shoulder this? Are you willing to sacrifice uh, all this uh, to shoulder this additional responsibility as a boss uh, for you to be effective one? Yeah, so yeah, these yeah. are some of the questions that I think people should be asking themselves. Yeah. So I totally agree with you that if you see uh, growth potential, if you see 
uh, you can perform better in this role, yeah. why not? Yeah. I think it's not always about control and power. It's more about where you serve best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you're right. You don't have additional headaches. Um, but if you're someone that likes to make all the decisions, then it could be a struggle for you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you don't, if you want to focus, I think people should focus on the performance, uh, serving in a corporation or as a leader, then knowing where to serve and how to serve is so important. Mm. And at least the big thing for me that I learned over the years is um, it's always a balance between uh, what your ideal goal for the business is and mm. being practical, right? There's always this the give and take situation. Yeah. Like uh, for myself, I find out that over the years, I always push towards like being the ideal situation when in actual fact, it's not practical for the business, uh, mm. monetary rise or whatever, mm. you know. And uh, I think that's where uh, Johnny, which is the current, my boss now, he plays a very big role. Like, he plays a very big role right, to, to, to take everything back down and to make it more practical. Yeah. Instead of just going like straight the ideal and I guess romantic way la, yeah. of handling yeah. a business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it takes a certain amount of uh, maturity or maybe life experiences yeah. to be able to uh, combine the both. Mm. Uh, the practicality of running a business versus uh, running uh, an ideal uh, business or the way that you you want to run a business. Mm. Uh, I think there's a term, right? Working on the business or working in the business. Mm. Uh, sometimes you can't mm. do both. You can't double head. Um, if you are in the business, for example, a chef, mm. then you enjoy cooking, you enjoy pleasing your audiences or your diners with your food. Mm. It's a different kind yeah. of skill set and experience from working on the businesses, right? Or working in the business. The rental, the location, hiring our stuff. Like running the restaurant itself. La, in right. So <clears throat> managing suppliers, they play a punk on you, right? Mm. Uh, or if you have some credit crisis, uh, you want to delay payment and things like that. So I think it takes a different skill set to work on these two things. Work on mm. the business and in the business. Um, and I'm not saying that young people or younger people cannot be entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, but there are things that you only realize after you dive into it. Mm. Yeah, and um, and for me, it's also a discovery for me mm. to 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 now find out uh, what I could have done better in the past, um, or what was right when I when I ran my business. Mm. So yeah, it's a learning journey, and I think we should always keep learning, right? I mean, um, I'm 37 this year. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, am I 37? Yeah, I'm 37 this year. Um, so I think if I'm gonna work in another 30, 40 years down the road. It's a long journey. Mm. And things keep changing so fast. Right? Mm. I mean, when I was in school, 10, 12, 15 years back, no such thing as Facebook marketing, digital marketing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now with uh, all these tech trends like AI, yeah. artificial intelligence. So, um, yeah, I think keeping a mobile mindset is probably the way or the safest um, way to, to be viable in the economy these days. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, role, uh, being an employee, being a boss, I think it's relevant if you want to think about contributing in a meaningful way. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So let's move on a little bit. Uh, you mentioned a bit on um, um, things changing very fast and technology changing very fast. Um, mm. uh, I, I, I don't know whether you got opinion on this, but basically from the last GFC since 08, uh, usually we say that when there's a recession there's always like unicorns that come out right mm. after that when the rebound comes up there's always like facebook all this so from the last 08 we had basically things like facebook amazon and everything so what do you think is the next unicorn with this coming recession uh i think it's just a thought la. Yeah, nobody yeah, can yeah, predict yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 literally yeah. nobody can predict who's yeah. the next yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now that i'm an e-commerce business and mm. now that we're in the midst of this uh, covid 19 situation mm. uh, i wish there were actually there are uh, stops in e-commerce mm. uh, okay alibaba is one uh, where i should have invested in right um, mm. i think food delivery mm. It's also what is in demand now. Mm. Not people, not because people like to splurge, but people, because people need to do that now. They want to stay home yes. to be safe. Yes. They could have elderly or young children at home uh, yes. and they need to order food, right? Yes. Uh, or online or, or, or order online uh, groceries. Uh, yes. So 
So, I mean, these are businesses that are hot right now, they're in demand right now. Yeah. Right? Um, so, back to your question about uh, whether I have a crystal ball. I don't. Uh, but I think there was also a very powerful, I think, TED Talk video about um, a single most important factor in the emergence of unicorns mm. is actually timing. Mm. Correct. Uber became big at a time when it was post uh, the GFC. Correct. Uh, a lot of Americans were out of job. Correct. Uh, and they were thinking about how to monetize their assets. Correct. In that case, yes. the cars. The cars, right? yeah. So it then gave rise to a huge untapped pool of drivers out there. Correct. In America. Yeah. So that's where um, Uber kind of leveraged on that. So mm. Uber, of course, with the tech uh, uh, supremacy, they had the tech uh, to be able to develop a tab and the vision to do that. But without that pool of untapped drivers, uh, because of the GFC, mm. Global Financial Crisis, uh, maybe they wouldn't have taken off the way they did. Mm. Right? So, uh, timing is important. Uh, right. But if you ask me now, what's in my crystal ball to see what would be uh, great, um, I think e commerce is something that people shouldn't ignore. Mm. Yeah. And um, I don't know whether you watch uh, Gary V, right? I watched uh, some, yeah. yeah. Not, not, not as of recent, uh, but yeah, yeah, once in a while, I do watch some. He said some. this one line that, that yeah. is even more prevalent now. Yeah. If your business yeah. is not available on this, yeah. on the phone, yeah. you won't survive. Yeah. If very, people very cannot true. search your business on a mobile phone, yeah. if they cannot find out about your business, be it to buy your business or just to find out where you are, yeah. you won't survive long. Yeah. So I think uh, it's all the more prevalent now in this COVID-19 days. Yes. So uh, I think anything to do with... Uh, okay, another one is... Uh, I think today on LinkedIn, I just saw a friend uh, posted this uh, screenshot of the most downloaded apps yeah. uh, last week. Uh, Zoom. So Zoom yeah. is... Uh, Zoom and also Google Hangout. I think Zoom is the biggest talk right now, right? Yeah. So uh, timing, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to Airbnb. Yeah. They were, <laughs> they were talks about them going to the list, uh, IPO this year. Um, but of course we work with the current situation can they still list? Uh, we don't know yeah. we don't know right yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah I think different times call for different heroes mm. um, so if you ask me anything to do with online um, e-commerce yeah uh, online groceries um, the world's gonna be the world's gonna come out quite different after this COVID-19 situation um, yeah. our habits or our norms uh, pre COVID nineteen will kind of change post COVID nineteen. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, if you ask me, I think anything to do it online, groceries, necessities, and some kind of online element. I think these are things to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so two things. I think uh, number one is my guess is Zoom will do very well, but I think Zoom will pave the way for another thing. So online someone. Education? Uh, for another company to be, be even bigger than Zoom. Sure. So Zoom will basically be like the MySpace and Friendster. Mm -hmm. And then someone, something like a Facebook will come and take over. Mm. Zoom will be the stepping stone. So That's what I feel. So la. you don't believe in first mover advantage? Yeah. I believe that um, eventually someone will be able to optimize it and do it better. Someone will, will be on the sidelines watching your mistakes and then do it better. And monetize it better. La. So, I, I mean, this is anybody's guess, right? Yeah. No, there's, I, I, no, there's uh, evidence of that. There's uh, evidence of that. Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know. I mean, you're not that much. Uh, I think age gap is a bit different. Uh, so, <laughs> so, if you know Friendster, yeah. So, I think the first social networking site, uh, at least I knew at that yeah. point in time was Friendster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone was crazy about Friendster. Yeah. But then, Facebook came over and took over Friendster. Yeah. Uh, Friendster didn't really know how to monetize efficiently at that point, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Could be timing. Uh, it could be first mover disadvantage where you make mistakes and you spend a lot of uh, marketing dollars to educate public. Correct. Yeah. And then the second mover comes in without spending so much on, on education. Mm. They ride on the wave mm. and they do better. Mm. So it could be a case like GoJet versus Grab in Indonesia. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, there's been evidence of that. I agree with you. Yeah. And then second thing you talk about um, like just the world changing in terms of the habits and everything. Yeah. 
the way I see it right now is a bit like a huge pendulum um, swing, right? So mm. for the past maybe five to ten years, we have been doing like globalization, everybody working with each other, uh, doing trades and everything. But I think now it's going to swing back the other way and a lot more countries are going to get going to close off, be more self-sustainable. Uh, even now, so during this situation, there are some countries that are already uh, close off certain exports to keep resources to themselves, right? So that they can get through this time. So I think people are going to, or at least countries are going to realize like, hey, you know, um, why should I do trades when uh, we can be self-sustainable as a nation by ourselves? And yeah, I think uh, we might close off a little bit more, um, especially maybe in the EU region, I guess. Maybe some countries will, will consider leaving the EU <laughs> after this whole thing blows off. <laughs> and then uh, um, I think there's a very high chance China will become number one economy after this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the coming years. Mm-hmm. I mean, just from GFC until now, they've moved from sixth to second. Mm. So, you, you, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I hear you and I agree with your opinion. Um, I, there's also a fundamental question, right? Yeah. Um, so, I did economics in school, so maybe I can try and explain this. Trade is good for the economy, a good uh, meaning it leverages on specialties of different economies, different markets. Mm. Um, if you got a cheaper labor pool or a bigger land space to have factories, let's say in Vietnam or in China, mm. then it's natural for them to produce, let's say, fabric uh, or garment or clothes at a much cheaper price. Correct. Yes. And who wins? Everybody wins because you're able to buy uh, same quality of garment at a cheaper price. Correct. Right? Versus if you now were to have uh, garment factories in Singapore. Correct. Right. Yes. So. But the question is, if every country decides to sort of uh, be self-sufficient, uh, yeah. they produce everything on their own, yeah. um, even if they can and they choose to, yeah. are consumers willing to pay for higher prices? Yeah, I think yeah. This that's is a big thing also. Yeah. something that, because um, it's not just supply side, but demand side as well. Correct. Right? Yeah. So um, this is something that I think we as consumers uh, have to think about. Mm. I... I like to use that as a context mm. and bounce to this topic of, uh, I think, food security. Mm. You and I may not need garments or clothes every day, mm. but we need food every day. We mm. need water every day. So necessities like uh, food, uh, water, mm. I do think there is uh, now a greater awareness um, by the citizens or by everyone now uh, on food security, right? That's true. Yeah. On the need, basic needs, uh. on of governments to think about how do you self source, right. how do you grow in your own country, mm. to feed your own people, how do you diversify your food sources, right? So I know governments around the world. Uh, I know for a fact Singapore and even China have really been thinking about this. Mm. Um, they they buy plots of land in other continents just so that they can have land to grow crops to be imported back to their own country. Hmm. Um, Singapore does this so? Singapore? Really? I don't know about Singapore, oh, oh, but, but China I know China is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for consumers who need to eat and drink every day, uh, I think we need to think more and I think it's also our role as citizens to kind of pressure uh, or even um, convince our governments that hmm. we should step up, they should step up in efforts to do that. Right? Mm. It can't be everything for development. You tear down factories and farms just to build more shopping malls and, and houses. Yes, we need Correct. that, but there needs to be a balance. And I think, uh, I think COVID-19 situation and the closure of Malaysia lockdown mm. uh, probably has prompted and will prompt uh, governments to look at this in a more uh, accelerated manner. Yeah. So, so yes, from globalization to a free market globalization, you will treat everything. Uh, to a situation where it's the complete opposite but I think there should be somewhere in the middle where it's only for necessities mm. where governments should really think about uh, insourcing or self-sourcing mm. um, th- even if it's more expensive mm. right if you're hungry you pay 100% more yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever right because yeah, you need yeah. that but yeah. for clothes maybe not right yeah. so I, I think um, I would 
think that the view is probably more about not the extremes, but yeah. somewhere moderated in the middle uh, on necessities. Yeah. In my opinion. Or maybe it will just swing from extreme to extreme first and then come back and balance itself again. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. And I guess it depends on how long this thing lasts, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how many people it, uh, yeah. it affects. But if you will make a good choose between buying new clothes uh, versus uh, having your regular supply of chicken, eggs, vegetables, I think people mm. will choose the food. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think we always read news and think about this big policy makers, the governments, the central banks, mm. but we also need to think about our role as consumers. Mm. Right? What will we buy? Right? Um, yeah. Who do we support? Right? Mm. What's the bigger picture in the end? Mm. Right? So, so yeah. Which I guess, um, Singapore has been very lucky throughout uh, this, uh, this, I mean, last 5, 10, 20 years because we don't really have to worry about these things yeah. as consumers. Yeah. It's always been there for us, very convenient for us at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I think there's also this thing about the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, right? MFA, right? I uh, think, uh, and if you look at, I think the, the, the usual reader, right? Uh, the usual cit- citizen, right? The man in the street like us, mm. uh, read about our relations with other countries through only like statements or state visits by our ministers or our president. Mm. Um, and if you see that why we are always, say in the context of China and, and US, we're mm. always neutral, right? Mm. Um, but I think credit must also be given to MFA to make sure that we are good relations with almost all countries. Correct. Yeah. Right? So that in crisis like this, we, we are able to call upon a good relationship to Correct. get supplies. <laughs> Correct, right. Correct. So I, I think a lot of things uh, that are being done by our government uh, probably goes unnoticed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the fact that now we're able to meet in this situation in this COVID nineteen days, uh, doing this podcast, um, is because of many other fellas who are doing their job right. Yeah. All yeah. This yeah. yeah. Uh, by, by, by all means, we are not like pro no, PAP no, no. or anything. Yeah. No. We're not pro government shit. We give credit where credit is due, la, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where, sure. Especially like many years where, I mean, some people complain about, oh, why, why must Singapore have such a big surplus in our budget and everything? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. now it's finally put into good use. La. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you that this is not an advocate uh, of any particular political party yeah. yeah but I think just looking at uh, as basic consumers yeah right, I think and just facts like, in general yeah. just facts of right. it, yeah. 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 And, and yeah so I, I'm, I'm thankful right I mean I, I think also if you look at a bigger context of how Singapore is doing it versus other countries uh, mm. I, I also think we are in a more fortunate situation yeah, mm. but of course everyone's gonna have their own opinion there always be people who agree and disagree mm. um, I don't agree with everything um mm. But I think for most parts, uh, I, yeah, I think this situation has been dealt quite uh, swiftly mm. yeah, by the authorities. But I think it's okay to disagree. I think it's um, just a difference of perspective. So, and you just got to be open-minded to everybody's opinion. Yeah. Provided they are, I mean, uh, not not like dangerous or harming to anyone. Yeah. Like that's the big thing. And yeah. this is also what your objective of this podcast is, right? Yeah, to yeah. talk to different people with different perspectives yeah. and, and who, are, who are willing to share that. And like you said, right? I mean, we when I first asked you why are you doing this? And yeah. you said that uh, doesn't mean that having someone opposite you who disagrees with you doesn't mean that you can't have a conversation yeah. about it, right? Yeah. And I totally agree with that. And yeah. I think that's what internet should be for, right? Yeah. To have that diversity of views. Yeah. Right, uh, and it shouldn't be um, a certain view clustering, and everyone's just in their echo chamber, right? And you yeah. don't hear other perspectives. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then for sure, we should have diversity in opinions. Yeah, yeah. Diver- I- diversity, diversity of opinions leads to diversity of ideas, mm. right? And in the end, the world today trumps by the best ideas, right? Correct. The, the the contest of ideas leads to best ideas, and we need that because. Correct. No one can ever have a, a, a monopoly of ideas anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and I think that's also why the US economy has always um, bounced back up further. 
whenever uh, after it's a uh, recession mm. um, because they are so diverse with different talents with different cities trying to compete to be the best mm. uh, and that attracts certain kind of people mm. um, to want to work uh, and migrate to, to US and that's how they keep pushing better right I mean think mm. about the top tech companies in the world mm. right of course you got your Weibo you got your uh, Baidu you got your Alibaba mm. but for all the things that we use right now as consumers you're using Apple phone Mm. This is designed in the US, right? Yeah. So so anyway, but that's a different separate topic altogether. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But actually, this, this idea of being um, more open-minded was pushed to me by uh, basically I listened to this podcast by Joe Gun Joe podcast. Um, he was talking to this um, guy. I, I hope I didn't remember his name wrongly. Called Daryl Davis. Okay. So he's a very interesting guy. He's a black guy. Uh, he's like a blue jazz singer he's a writer and everything um, but he is most famous for talking to people of the KKK mm. yeah if you don't know about KKK in, in the US basically they are a group of uh, white supremacists la. yeah they believe that they are the, the, the supreme color of race or per se yep. and then they believe that all basically all black people are dumb la, or worse than them yep. yeah so he became popular because he um basically found some way to sit down with members of the KKK, sit down with members of the KKK, and then eventually, um, just by talking to them, being friends with them, educating them, and just listening to them, a lot of these members leave the KKK. Mm. Yeah, they change their mindset. They're like, hey, uh, they, they suddenly feel like, like, why, why am I still in this, this, this society, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, it's very interesting. I think he, he managed to convert like, hundreds of members out of the KKK mm. and then he's uh, right now his life goal is to uh, use his retirement money yeah. uh, to build a museum uh, because he, he actually collected all the uniforms from these ex-KKK members so he wants to build a museum and put all, the, all this KKK stuff on the wall mm. uh, because he feels that uh, at least for the US KKK is, is like a very it's a topic that nobody really talks about, yep. even though it's very prevalent in the US history. Yep. Like everybody only talks about it under the table. Yeah. So he's to him, it's like, why not? It's still part of US history. They should uh, come. Uh, they should sort of not say celebrate it, but remember it yep. as part of history. And he wants to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the way he talked about it really uh, pushed me to see this. Like you know, if if, if a person like him can sit in a room next to someone who literally thinks that he, he's dumb you know uh, if he can be that open-minded I think um, slowly a lot of us can do that as well la. yeah and uh, just by um, education I think it's the it's like the more appropriate solution to um, maybe hatred or extremists in the world yeah yeah I think uh, with awareness uh with content like this or or conversations, right? Yeah. Um, but what's so vital is um, that that sense of open mindedness in individuals to be able to first sit down with someone who you think you hate mm. across the table, uh, and number two to be able to speak uh, and share opinions and thoughts. Mm. Um, I think it starts with the mind, right? Even you have the content and awareness, but if you just choose not to read certain publications or certain opinions, mm. you'll never change or you'll never get to see the other side of the, mm. of the opinion. So I think being a new parent myself, uh, I think one of the, the values that I will uh, definitely teach my son is being open-minded that, mm. that, that my opinion uh, shouldn't matter as much as his at least on how he wanted to live his life. Shouldn't be the law la, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think my, yeah, so, so I think it's a value. Some people just have it, some people just are open-minded and some are not, right? No mm. matter how much, right? No matter the evidence, right? Are there mm. that, hey, you know, this, this, this thing that you're doing is bad mm. or it's not good. Um, so I think open-mindedness is, it's, it's difficult even if, even now we have the internet. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in fact, the internet does encourage people to just be sticking to people of their own, thoughts and beliefs yeah, which I, can be dangerous yeah I, I think the internet like uh, especially recent trends it forces people to pick teams yeah like if, if if you are like team A then 
if you're not part of team A, you must you must hate team A kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know? It's like, yeah, why must be why must I be on a team? Like why can't I just uh, or if I'm on a team, doesn't mean that I don't appreciate your your perspective, right? You can be just be um, in a different situation. Yeah. 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 It happens in newspapers as well. Uh, in Singapore, probably we don't have that, but in other countries, um, there are papers that are, let's say, pro Republicans. And, yeah. And then, and then if you are a Republican, you want to read only the kind of papers, right? Or yeah. news channel, right? Um, so maybe that's also a reason why mainstream media is losing its grace. Mm. Yeah. And um, I mean, content producers like yourself with this podcast uh, is gaining traction, mm. right? Uh, together with Joel. Rogan, Jorgen, yeah, Rogan, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, yeah, where people want or can be exposed to a diversity of views. Mm. Yeah, so, so yeah, it, it's not just politics, but even in newspapers, um, people still choose uh, to read or buy the papers that support their views, right? To, yeah. to so that they feel like <clears throat> part of Team A or Team B. Right? Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But it, even now, it's uh, it's kind of worse now because sometimes you don't even get to pick. Sometimes it's just uh, served to you. you yeah. Know, without, you, without you knowing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. The, 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 the few cases, the case when Trump was elected, when uh, he employed uh, Cambridge Analytica with yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you, you, have you heard of that situation before? Yeah, that? I have, yeah. I have, I have. And that's why now I think Twitter and Facebook are trying to for the 2020 elections, they, they, they made some big pledges, right? That they're not going to have any political ads on their platform. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's hard, man. It's really, really hard. <laughs> it's hard to control everything. Yeah. So, it's also, comes back to consumers, right? What mm. you consume, right? I think it's in the end an ecosystem, right? Mm. Uh, demand and supply, right? Mm. Uh, Supply sometimes exists or are developed because there's demand for it. Correct. Right. Yeah. And what keeps them sustainable is that there's a sustained demand for this. Correct. Right. But if we were to think back as consumers to think that, hey, is this really the source of information that I should rely on? Or mm. should this be the only source of information I should rely on to make an informed decision? Uh, then we might have to shift to other forms of uh, media or platform mm. for information. Right. So I think everyone has a part to play. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah, um, it's also I guess maybe yeah, like you said, it's part of our responsibility to also share with other people who are maybe not so familiar with or not so tech savvy with social media and everything. Mm. Like for example, like uh, my best analogy would be uh, my wife and maybe her her mom as well. Sometimes they read things online and then they just believe word for word. Yeah. They don't source check or everything like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, I, it also falls upon us la, to to tell people like, hey, you know, uh, you should see whether the website or whatever is legit or not. Yeah. <laughs> or whether yeah. reporting is legit. Yeah. 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 And that's the only way, I guess, to move on. Yeah. yeah. So, I have a question, right, for you. I think uh, we knew each other since as early as 2015, 16? I think so. Yeah. 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 Where you Fitness Bravo was at its first location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on yeah. top of a shop house. Yeah, right. Uh, and and yeah, we 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 chatted on very fine, and uh, I still go back there, although less frequent now. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, what's your plan, uh, at least for career wise down the road? Um, and um, now that you're gonna podcast um, down the road, are you? I don't know for your work. Are you focusing more on? Uh, PT, personal training, mm. group classes, uh, or uh, is there plans or are you helping the, uh, Johnny, the owner, mm. on expanding the business? Um, mm. Yeah, what, what's your plan? I'm just curious. So definitely my, um, definitely my main focus or time will still be in Fitness Bravo, in PT. Uh, as of now, because of the current situation, I mean, we usually do PT or group classes, right? So now, we have temporarily stopped group classes in the studio itself yeah. to just minimize the, the crowd and everything and then we just do more PT. So, um, just nice as of now, because of that, I have a bit more time to do like the podcasting stuff and everything. Uh, uh, but before this, like before this whole thing happened, I already said it in my mind that I wanted to do 
um, this podcast. I wanted to really push hard for this podcast, at least for this year. Um, because I just felt like it's something that um, I want to explore. Uh, something that I can really learn from. And hopefully, um, it's something that I personally enjoy a lot and I want to contribute back to to everybody else who who maybe possibly could enjoy this as well. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. for me, um, I learn a lot of things. Uh, just from listening to random people. Mm. Like, like the podcast I told you about, Joe Rogan Podcast, he talks to he talks to mathematicians, he talks to astrophysicists, yeah. you know, he talks to very, very random, random people. He even he even talked to uh uh people like uh who's that famous boxer? Uh shit, I can't remember his name. How can I remember his name? Uh, UFC guy? No, 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 the the famous old school boxer uh, that he Mike made. Tyson. Mike Tyson, yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a very interesting yeah. podcast for me also. Yeah. Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah. And then uh Yeah, I just wanna share this and I wanna try to make this podcast as genuine as possible. Mm. Um as accessible as possible. Anybody can come on to the show. Um yeah, whether this will go on for the next five to ten years, I have no plans for that yet. I don't know for mm. sure. Uh, I hope so. I hope that it will be self sustainable. Yeah, mm. but um, yeah, yeah. My main focus will still be fitness bravo itself. Yeah, and then um, family. Uh, family wise, um, no plans for kids yet. <laughs> Not for this year, maybe next year when things are a bit more stable. Mm. As stable as in the economy. The economy, environment, everything more stable. Yeah. And also possibly next year when we get our house. Yeah. That's the thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh the other thing I want to touch on is also because uh the other thing I want to touch on is the podcast itself, actually I wanted to start I wanted I had this idea since last year to start it. Um but I mean, like yourself also, I guess I had a really busy year mm. last year. Mm. I had my own wedding also last mm. year. <laughs> and last year was a very interesting year for me. Um, I will actually, it was only the start of this year when I finally admitted that last year was a bad year for me. Yeah. Like throughout the whole of last year, um, I kind of fell sick a lot of times. I yeah, it's big. I got I had a sore throat like almost every month. Mm. Yeah, and then I got injured and everything. Uh, and then with the wedding being busy and everything, it almost felt like I was trying to focus on recovery for the whole year. Mm. Like I was constantly trying to recover from something. Mm. Yeah, like I felt sick. I trying to recover. I got injured. I trying to recover. Mm. Something happened. I trying to recover. Yeah. Yeah. So my whole mindset was just focused on recovery. I'm not sure whether you had this before in, in your life, like, I guess. Mm. Um, maybe it's from like pushing hard for a number of years and then finally like just one year, your your mind and your body just decides to break down for the whole year. It's like, it's like, yeah, it just happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, it was only like the start of this year when I tried to create this podcast with somebody, with a friend. Uh, it didn't work out so well because he had other commitments to do, but I talked to another um, fellow podcaster who's trying to start his own podcast as well. And I think in that chat, um, he kind of made me self-realize that I could, I could start this on my own. Like mm. I wanted to do this on my own. Mm. And I have never felt that way for a very long time. Like I never had this drive for a very long time already. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's just like a mindset switch, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, as things are going on now, I get more and more motivated. And and yeah. And then yeah. Good. Here we are now. Good. Yeah. I have similar uh, intentions as well. As, as I told you, I started yeah. my own website. Uh, there was a period where in between jobs, uh, I, I had some free time. So yeah. I thought I want to do it. Um, and also podcasts is just something that I was looking at. I'm, I I like the medium of podcasts. Yeah. Uh, I consume podcasts yeah. on my daily commute to work. Yeah. I learned a lot on podcasts. 
that I don't think I would otherwise have uh, learned yeah. in mainstream media. Uh, and I think this is this setting. It's it's great. Um, you, you get to. It's a bit more intimate. You 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 get to learn some of the hidden secrets, uh, or uh, you learn from people's life experiences. So mm. so I have similar views with with with, uh, with you, like you. Uh, maybe down the road, yeah, I could interview you or we work together down the road. For, yeah, for, definitely. For uh, yeah, maybe you should talk to me earlier about starting something of your own. You know, um, I, I, maybe it's in me, or maybe due to my past experiences, I, I always tell people that um, if not now, then when, right? Because yeah. it's never a good time, right? Yeah. It's never a good time, right? And, and humans are just very well conditioned to give excuses. Yeah, uh, humans are very good at status quo, right? And I think personally, as uh, I get older. That state of inertia gets larger. Yes. Yeah. Right. And you get uh, as you increase your comfort zone, you just mm. want to stay there. And mm. that's also one of my biggest fear in my life that I have a big comfort zone, that I never want to risk or do anything uh, unique, different, mm. or, or brave mm. again down down my my life. Mm. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm always trying to volunteer my time with friends who could be going through a difficult time at, at work or mm. career. Um, I'm always happy to talk to them. Mm. Yeah, I likewise, I could do that for you as well. Mm. Um, for every reason you tell yourself not to do something, mm. I think I can give you one or even two reasons to mm. do it. Yeah. So I think it's all about uh, prioritizing. Mm. Yeah. And um, a lot of people think life in terms of like time and money, mm. but there's a third dimension that I think people don't see, which is energy. Mm. Right. Down the road, yes, you're young. Maybe you don't have much money as much as you want to have, mm. uh, but you have more time. Right, but down the road you say, oh, maybe wait till I am more financially settled, then uh, hopefully I, I will get to be more comfortable and do it, right? Mm. Take more risk. But by then you may have time, you have some money because money can buy you some time. Mm. But you may have the energy to do it, mm. right? And later on you may, may have other uh, financial or other commitments, right. kids, kids, yeah, maybe a sick parent that you need to take care of. So I hit. I would hate to live a life where I look back and regret. Mm. So that's also what has been pushing me to go on this adventure, right? Starting my own thing and then doing something else. Mm. Um, but the end goal is about trying to be meaningful, mm. uh, try to learn things. Uh, so yeah, I, I maybe one day we can work together or I could interview you for my podcast. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But is, is there your so-called current angle now to, to create a podcast or mm, good question yeah. uh, just now doing a brief chat we had before this podcast started yeah. recording uh, it also made me think about um, what are my goals right I mean yeah. I've been I've been thinking about it for some time uh, I think it's always a, a, a thought in my head right what are my goals um, I think for now I'm a new father so mm. I want to be a hands-on father or I want to be there for my kids uh, mm. for my, my kid Okay, one child. Mm. Yeah. Um, Maybe two next time. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think, I will. Uh, he's the priority lah for now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and of course now at my job and where I work at, I think it's also good to uh, learn things so that I can start to perform and mm. contribute. Um, that's also very important to me. Mm. Yeah. So back to your question about whether podcast the angle. Uh, it's always something that I want to do. Uh, I don't know where I'll start to do it, uh, but maybe I should kick myself in the ass sometimes and, and really start to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what is one book that you would that you've read and that you recommend to people? Oh shit! I don't read books. That's the big thing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the thing that I, I've noticed after I finish all my studying also. Uh, is I realize my reading is very poor. I'm just not a reader in a sense. Yeah. Uh, I noticed this because I was trying to take a course, and then this course had an audio book and and the uh, the physical book itself. Yeah. So just out of random curiosity, I I tried learning the same chapter through reading and just through listening. So to reading the the like this chapter, I had to read like many 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 different many different times, but through audio I can listen to it anywhere and I, I could get it once through. I could even listen in the shower. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, which is why I like the, the format of podcast a lot because yeah. I pick up things very fast by listening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So most of my information I've I've been getting from basically just podcasts, like just Joe Rogan podcast, and maybe some other small podcasts here and there. What's one podcast yeah. that you recommend? One podcast that I recommend? Oh, shit. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> or one podcast episode that you recommend? Uh, you don't have to give the answer now, but maybe when you post this video, you can put it in the comments or put it in the description. No, there's too many to pick. Uh, yeah, you have to pick one. Yeah. Because everyone only got their four hours. I would say probably the Mike Tyson one. The Mike Tyson one is very memorable. So basically, um, he talks with Mike Tyson and then um, mm. uh, Joe Rogan uh, talks with Mike Tyson and then uh, they go through some details about his previous life, uh, about basically how he was an orphan. He, um, he was a huge orphan. He was like, 100 kgs at 13 years old <laughs> so he got picked up by this uh, very old school trainer uh, which was like the the most hardcore of hardcore trainers mm. and then the, the trainer just basically taught him to become a weapon mm. yeah uh, basically taught him about uh, no emotions uh, like his emotions he's basically a tool uh, Mike Tyson was a tool and then uh, but he didn't know this because he was young right he was 13 right so, uh, don't tell everything, like, right? Because you're gonna people gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, listen to it. Uh, maybe you can have the link. Uh, yeah. So in, in yeah. So yeah. Basically, all he knew was how to fight. Mm. That's Good. Don't tell yeah. us more. Okay. <laughs> let, let us know. Uh, put put it in the put the podcast link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the video. Oh, I just thought another goal that I want to achieve. Yeah. Good. I want to one day uh, smoke weed with Joe Rogan. Okay. On the show. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That is like a side goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can also be the main goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, don't, don't, don't think about whether we set a goal. Don't think about whether you can achieve it or not. Yeah. Um, and if you don't, if it, if it's something that if you set a goal that you 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 know that you can achieve, then that's not brave enough. That's not ambitious enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. yeah. So that's recently, true. I'm reading uh, Ray Dalio's uh, principles. Ah, okay. Yeah. What's uh, it about? Roughly. Um, he's, uh, he hates this hedge fund or uh, um, I think it's called Bridgewater mm. um, hedge fund and uh, they run and manage funds. I think they're probably the most profitable or the most successful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he is quite known in the industry about his views mm. uh, and also his uh, ways of working, uh, how he managed um, processes and people in the company. Mm. Um, I wouldn't spoil it for you, but basically this book principles is a summary uh, of all his life principles, uh, at, at life and at work as well. Mm. Yeah, and that kind of help him to be successful the way he is now. Mm. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a thick book. I'm going through this now, uh, but I think it's something that I where, where, do, where do you find the time to read? <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, uh, I, I like to maximize whatever time I have, right? Uh, yeah. So if I have breakfast, I like to have it or have a meal. Yeah. Uh, I do it less often now, uh, but I like to have a meal in front of, let's say, YouTube videos. Uh, news okay. clips. Yeah. Bloomberg yeah. news or Bloomberg tech news to know what's happening in the world. Yeah. Uh, and for reading, I do it in the bathroom. Every How morning. do you read in the bathroom? No, when I when I'm doing my business. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you like the shower. <laughs> you <laughs> shower. <baby. laughs> so that, that's my 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 duty pleasure. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I yeah, you can say I'm multitasking, but I thought uh, that was a very valuable time of my day where I can actually do peaceful reading. I think that is everybody's almost a lot of people's guilty pleasure, right? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you dig their nose when you're in the toilet, but, yeah. but I like to read. I think it's a, it's a peaceful time. Uh, yeah. Less one now because my baby cries quite often. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, I, I, I do that. Yeah, I, used to, I used to read a lot more. Uh, but now we've got a baby, got a wife at home. It's less uh, realistic to read. Uh, for now. Yeah. For now, for now. For now, for now. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, but I enjoy reading. I think a lot of value in it. Uh, but like you, I also see a lot of value in podcasts and listening, right? Mm. Because um, in, in a way, podcasts are a bit more uh, reactive, right? You're able to rely on the host, ability to ask 
deeper questions Correct. to get most out of someone, right? Yeah. So I like Tim Ferriss. Mm. Uh, I think Ferris is good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I think maybe we could end off with one question that I have for you, right? Can. If yeah. you were to have, this is a question that is not unique. Huh? Mm. Uh, I think Tim Ferry, Tim Ferry asked this to his podcast guest as well. Mm. Uh, if you could have a signboard and you could print your message on the signboard to the world, what would it be? Self awareness. Like, just, uh, yeah, just basically self awareness. Just basically everybody try to learn more about themselves. I think, at least for the masses, a lot of people are looking out, you know, like looking for some sort of like a, uh, like a mentor or a, or a, or a person to imitate or person uh, like basically like a figurehead lah, yeah. But um, not many people look in and find out about like who 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 they who they are really in, in themselves, what they like, what they dislike, what they feel about certain things. Uh, and just basically having opinions lah. yeah I think many people are frustrated not because of uh, external uh, things that happen around them but they just don't understand what makes them happy yeah I think self-awareness is a very very big thing yeah. good uh, very good yeah. yeah with that we end off the podcast right. okay yeah Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. No, no, thank, thanks for the time. Maybe the next time round, uh, yeah, we can okay. actually have an Asahi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> we yeah, yeah. plan for Asahi. Yeah, we plan for a beer, <laughs> but uh, my throat's not feeling well. Uh, so I thought it'd be safer to have a tea. Yeah. Uh, but uh, thanks for the time. I, I, I think this this has been cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we hope I hope to work together with you someday on, on podcast or something. Yeah. yeah right. I think a lot to learn from you, right? From your equipment, your setup. Yeah. Uh, this was all like one by one. Uh, each episode, I, I put, something, put in something new. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're watching this, you know, if you like this podcast, this conversation, uh, and also other conversations, yeah. do subscribe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and then uh, if they want to find you, where can they go? Or uh, you want to promote your... Okay. So I have a website. website? Uh, it's John Lim, uh, C-Y at, uh, uh, dot com. Sorry. So it's John Lim, C-Y dot com. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's my website. Uh, not the most content yet. I'm working on it. Uh, like I said baby first yeah. Um, but yeah this is where you can find me so maybe if I have a podcast that's also will be where I'll be posting the podcast cool Yeah. alright thank you for coming again thank, thank you, you. alright